three things to practice to have an off-leash dog, and we're using e-collar. Let's go. Good. We're practicing move when I move, stop when I stop, and I use let's go if I need to get the dog's attention. Let's go. Good. I'd like to have enough focus to where if I turn, she just turns with me. That's what we're working towards, but she's pretty new at this and it's a really busy day out. Good girl. That was really great because I stopped moving and she stopped too without me needing the command wait. This is to make sure your dog is in tune with you. You just practice turns or you turn when your dog is focused on something else. You practice pausing. Your dog needs to be aware of what you're doing, care about your body language. It's so important. This is also the ultimate exercise to do if your dog is ever stressed out Let's and can't go. listen to a tight yeah, heel or um, they're struggling with down. Just do move when I move, stop when I stop. Let's go. It's the most organic movement to a dog and it, it just works so beautifully in all settings. Wait, good girl. So that's what I do if I do the move when I move and the stop when I stop. I'm practicing that, doing that anywhere, and I stop moving and she continues to move, we use wait. And it just means what it says. So I'm gonna see, she'll let me catch up with her. Good girl, what a good girl. So I can choose to just stop or turn, basically. Let's go. Let's go. Uh-oh. No, let's go. Good girl. So I doubled my level. So I was at a 15. Let's go. And I uh, went from a 15 to a 30. For my N-O. You could also just repeat yourself. Some, some dogs, a 30 is like a big correction. For her, it's not. <laughs> you know, so you just kind of play around with what your dog needs. And she has definitely gotten in trouble. Yes, but not honestly, only a couple times. Yes, good girl. You're good. <laughs> Wait. Nice. Just a verbal. She's watching. I'm gonna let her watch for a while, see if she takes off. Good girl. Yeah. Down. down. I tapped on the repeat. Took a little long. <laughs> drop it. No, drop it. Good girl. So, same thing. I, I tapped on the no. You can also just tap and repeat. But again, you know, 30 with my border collie would have been too much for, for a moment like that. Unless I was trying to set a tone. Unless he was really pushing me and I needed to set a tone with him. Then I would have used a 30. So it's, um, I just kind of hesitated for a second. I thought she was getting up. You just got to know what, what your goal is. Different dogs, different levels. Evie, come. Good girl. Sit. Good job. Another thing to perfect is real, real world recall practice, meaning you recall the dog when they're distracted. Break. You're free. <laughs> sit whoa I cannot I'm gonna we're gonna repeat that sit crazy thank goodness I was still at my 30 I actually held the button down so why did I have to why did I do that because I only said come once I didn't give her a chance I didn't say no and come but I didn't have time she was literally taking off into that field to go say hi to all those people. So if your dog is in motion, taking, oh wow, okay. Taking off, you have to understand that not only is it okay to go ahead and tap, but you have to. You never, my, my thing is you never run away from me in public ever. So I'm very comfortable with that. Also, I had to hold down the button or she would have jerked my arm out. And my shoulder's already hurting. Not because of her, but um, 
because it's uh, another dog. But anyway, I just point that out so her parents don't feel bad. It actually wasn't her, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> but anyway, my point is just that, um, wow, this is, this is fun. <laughs> my point is just that your dog just zooming away from you unless another person is recalling your dog and that's okay and you're practicing that that's never okay in my book and a 30 for her holding down the button until that's what I was doing I was holding it down until I saw her um, turn around because I knew if she just slowed down if I went off the button she'd take off again so that was really important Evie enough so here's the repeat clip. I really want to talk this through because this is where people get in trouble. You have to practice because the timing for this is critical. I get my leg out of the way. You'll see that again because the leash was between my legs. That would have hurt and jerked my arm um, or she would have been in the middle of that field with everybody. And, uh, and that's embarrassing for a normal owner or a trainer. And so the timing is critical. Well, how do I have such good timing? Practice. I have clients that have just as good a timing as me. I kid you not. Usually it's their levels are too low and that's why they, they struggle or they don't set the dog up enough. But look at this in motion. She's full on running, guys. So I don't have time to properly ask her you know, to, to say no and then correct her. There's no time for that. So she, I, I'd say come, and I know she's not going to listen, but, but I say come, and then I'm immediately holding down the dial, and then you see her turn. I am continuing to hold it down until she commits to that turn. So here it is again. It's important. See, I'm holding down the button the whole time, and then when she starts to shake her head is when I was off because that's when she committed. To, to coming back. The reason I had to hold it down is because 30 was not a valuable enough level in the moment to be an actual correction. A quick tap and a, oh, oh, turn around on my own and come back. It wasn't enough that 30 was too low for that moment. That's why I had to hold it down. You guys should know that. It was still really valuable because you'll see how she's obviously not overwhelmed by the stem. You'll see she's quite comfortable still staring at everybody, but she hangs with me. So that to me says even though my level wasn't high enough for a legitimate setup, for a legitimate correction, because we do teach no and then correct to pair the correction with the no. I didn't have time for that. <laughs> she was taken off. And that's going to happen to you at home. So I, that's why I wanted to share this. It's, it's, it's kind of a mistake. But because my timing is good, because I practice, it worked out. You know? So anyway, <laughs> I hope you guys learned from it. <laughs> break. Break. Yeah. Break. Now let's talk about break. Break means do what you want, right? Okay, sure. Break definitely means you're free. But let me ask you this. Your kids, or if you don't have kids, when you were little and you were getting free time to play with siblings or your friends, could you just do whatever you wanted? Or were there still rules to even freedom? As adults, there are tons of rules to freedom. So if we don't give those same rules to our dogs, then we are doing them a disservice. We're creating out of control, confused dogs that push boundaries. And I don't mean like a little cute pushiness, I mean severe, severe boundaries, which is a golden retriever rushing into a field, jumping on a child, um, grabbing the ball, not wanting to give it up and just wreaking havoc now to you to someone out there that might sound hilarious but i assure you it is not now i'm re-showing you guys this clip because as i'm talking watch her demeanor she's looking at the game glancing at me looking at the game glancing at me i'm moving backwards and i don't call her to me i was talking to you guys and she gravitates towards me why is that because instead of just getting excited and acting on impulse and heading into the crowd, she had some accountability for that. So she's actually thinking. She's becoming more self-aware. She's making better life choices. That is the difference between a self-aware dog that doesn't run into the street because there's a consequence versus the dogs that just run into the street and then get hit by a car. I'm creating self-awareness. 
So I just kind of wanted to point that out to you guys um, because it's an important thing for your dog to have. But because we live with dogs in the home and they're not in nature so much, they need reminders. e is great for that. Let's go break. Yeah, let's go break. She's like, I'm, I'm not falling for that again. <laughs> Good girl. Apparently you did learn something from that holding down at a 30, even though it wasn't like a big correction. Yeah. Oh, there's some people walking by. Good girl. She's, every time I stop, she pays attention now. Good job. She basically, to be honest, if I'm being honest with Evie, she needs a reminder every time we go out. <laughs> and it's the same with Maxine too. <laughs> there's always at least one, one time in the first few minutes where she has to be reminded she has to listen and that's okay. Hey, enough. Oh, pout. I think we'll do some down stay work. Down, good, good job, good down. <laughs> so the third part of it is down stay recall. This is really important, especially if a dog has gotten kind of wild, too much freedom, or the situation's too difficult. Um, or actually, I shouldn't say that because sometimes down stay is harder than recall work for a dog uh, being free you know, being able to move around. So it really depends on the dog, but this is different. This teaches your dog to listen to you at a down state at a distance. So it's a very different part of the brain we're working, different type of impulse control. It's the most forgotten about, to be honest, and I don't want you guys to forget about it. So I wanna make sure that every outing you do, you do at least two of these and at a distance. You're not right next to your dog. Evie, come. Good girl. Good job, Evie. Sit. You want to stay in the shade? That's okay. Down. I'm going to go over here and get in front of them and see if she tries to zoom by me. And I'm going to wait till one of them hits a ball and very strategically recall her and see if she wants to zoom by me. Find challenges for your dog. Ooh, a lefty's up. Lefty's up to bat. Evie, come. Good girl. Good job. Sit. Good. Down. Wow, look at you. Nice. Good girl. Okay, so, yeah, you're a good girl. Yeah. So, find a great area like this where you've got a pathway, and then you've got a field so you can work off the pathway. All right, so you're like, look, I got family coming up with a baby. I've had a few dogs walk by um, the half hour we've been out here. And then I've had this really great softball uh, team to work off of. So anyway, find things to work off of, guys. Work your dogs. Practice those three really important things. Look at her ears. Evie, come. No, Evie, come. Good girl. Sit. Good job, down. Excellent. Very nice. Um, I did tap. I felt like a, a 30 was a little bit hot for, for that situation. I mean, she would have been fine. But just instead of tapping the continuous button, which has a little bit more oomph than the black button, I tap black on the no. Just small little things, guys. Play around. Have fun. Um, we have used food with her. Uh, I need a third hand to really do it efficiently with this video, but we've absolutely used food with her. When do we not use food? When her ears are engaged with something else. So if I was gonna use food, I'll just use this example of these people. Evie, Evie, come. Yeah, good girl, come, come. The food would be right here, good job. And then sit. And I would not feed her for that. I would not say good girl and feed her for that, for those that little ear, yeah, that little ear perk up and uh, looking at them, right? I would either, oh, doggy. Actually, I'm just gonna see if she can do her stay. Her implied stay. Good girl. Good job, Evie. Wow, look at you. So if I had food right now, instead of recalling her to me, I would come back in and reward her for that awesome, awesome implied stay while that dog walked by. If I felt like this was getting too much, 
like she was looking too much. If she was, if I felt like she was feeding off of that, like getting amped up by it, just like I could do it for here. I'm gonna scroll way down. Four, no, good girl. At a four, I'm just four, five, six. I'm just asking her to settle down a little bit. She's not in big trouble. I'm just like, you need to chill out a little bit. No, you have to be higher for this. No. 12, 13. No. Good girl. I'm finding lowest level possible to just ask her to chill out. Because if I don't, it will continue to escalate and escalate and then she'll take off towards the ball again or another dog or get barky. She gets very, very amped up. <laughs> so I wanna catch those moments really, really early. Evie, you are so sweet. I loved working with you. Her first owner lesson is tomorrow. It went by so fast. Yes, it did, pretty girl. Oh, yes. 